Charlie Bronson is a good friend of mine. I've I, I known Charlie for a long time. The, the system made Charlie Bronson. The Bronson is the system. That's his mum and dad. They lock him in cages, treat him like an animal, right? No one's, I know he's got a bad terrible record, but underneath all that, he's a nice person, Charlie Bronson. He does all his art. Still kept, he's never killed anyone. He's still banged up now. And this is going on. I've got loads of mates who are still in there now, like my co-defender. He's never coming home, right? And you've got these other kids, outrageous murders like kids and things like that. And they treat people more like me, who's, who's after a few quids, a lot worse than what they do child. If they want to bang us, want to lock me up, you know. Yeah. There's pedophiles out there just getting six months, the third sentence, 18 months, and they're doing some nasty shit. Do you know what I mean? But again, the system is flawed. There's a fault in it. It's yeah. set up to fail. What was Charlie Bronson like then? How's how's he? Did he still in good contact? Uh, it was a funny story. We was in we was in Franklin's and um, there's only like ten Cockney eights. He's turned up that Kenny Noise fucking shook the game was in and we all went what? Thought really? So you know, don't do things like that, mate. And then um, the geezer turns up. I'm standing with a fella and. Uh, he walks out and sees the graphs. Well, I knew him from, I knew him, what he'd done, they were stra strapping bombs to security guards, right? I knew all about it because people that come from my area, most armed robbers were sort of brought up in their areas, you know who they are. Like, if you watch a film called Town, Boston was the main thing for armed robbers. Canning Town and Stratford was a breeding ground for people like me, you know, so. And uh, so anyway, calls him a graph. So I swear I've done marks, so I sweep the geezer's legs, kicks the geezer in the head, knocks him out on the floor. So Bronson went, Fucking hell, of it. what a fucking kick that was. And I went, yeah. All of a sudden, now all the screws come out. We were in Franklin Prison. And they were trying to take me off the yard, right? So they'd come walking over. I went, well, coming in. So me and Bronson, all about, so the Cockney A's were fucked. We have to have it off with the screws. So we had a big punch out of the screws. They've run. They've run. Uh, they've run. All the screws have run, started locking the cells in the blocks and that. So he goes, right, let's take the jail over. But never, never, ever happened in Franklin before. So I said, sort of think, fuck me, I'll start this off. I'll get another 10 here, like. So I was going, come on, let's just lay you. So lock the cells. Like, anyway, it, it, it all gets calmed down. Then it goes off again. And then, and then Bronson's involved with it again, anyways. So they put me down the block. So they said, right, if you don't come out the block, don't get him out the block, we're going to smash your jaw up, right? So anyway, so uh, they give in. So this is a funny story. This is so. They said, right, we want to see, we want to give, we want to hear what you want to say about Cockney A's. Or, co or Cockney double A's. He said, we want to hear what he says. So there's going to be three governors, bring three inmates, and we'll sit down and the go stop the beatings and all that's what we wanted, right? So he goes into the governor's office. There's a governor sitting there, governor sitting there, governor sitting there. I, think I, was, I was with Nicky Dunford at the time. So we walked in there. There's another category A. So he said, right, what do you want? All of a sudden, the door goes, bang, the door flicks open. And I ain't joking, he was standing, bollock naked, big pair of boots on. He had a fluorescent <laughs> tube off the, out the night. And he went to the governor's, no, no, And I ain't joking, them three governors sat there like that. They sound like Tom and Jerry. They went, <laughs> they sort of slid through the things like that. And, and that's how, that's, that was Charlie Bronson. He was just like a... Uh, a fucking character. Yeah, because he only got jail for a robbery at the time. Yeah. Now he's over 30 years. Yeah, and he's still in there. I mean, like, there's loads of people in there like him who should be... Let, who, who Do you think he'll ever get out? I hope he does. He's a nice bloke. I yeah. hope he does. There's loads of people like Paul Glenn. He should be released. He should be there. Who's he? He's my Cody Finn. He, he yeah. never killed that person. Mm -hmm. He should be released. Yeah. Well, not, he, he was there, he's going to get some bird, but don't lock him up for the rest of his life for something he didn't do. Yeah. Charlie Bronson was there, Charlie, you know, I went all the way through Charlie. What uh, was Charlie like? Charlie. Charlie is good as gold, you know, I'm in his books and a uh, funny thing, I meant to be going to see Charlie, right, with the screenwriter, because there's different stuff happening mm -hmm. here and, um, you know, he mentioned me in all, you know, his books, I and mean, them books from them days when we mm -hmm. was going through that stuff. So I went all the way through with Charlie. I like Charlie. He's like that old school. He's very like the old man in the circus. Yeah. But Charlie, Charlie, Charlie is misunderstood in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I think we all was, you know, yeah. then really. So. Because he did a robbery. Now he's still in. <sighs> he's just. Yeah. He's um. Yeah. Because I know uh, I had Vic Dark on as well. I know you know Vic and Vic's really pally with Charlie. He's sent a mess want me to send a message to Charlie for because they're trying to get him out for 
Um, his release. Um, I'm trying should to get be released. Charlie on the show for the podcast because I know he's never been. I think he, he writes a lot of letters. I think he and does. does and, you know, he's a great artist, yeah. uh, James. Um, and people who spent time with him speak highly of him. But yeah. again, the people who are involved with him were all high security. Fucking, there's ten people taking you for a shit in a shower. There's um, so you've for people who speak out and say he's a good guy people won't understand that they like won't from understand the that. they'll go yeah, well you're all don't. fucking nuts you're yeah. getting moved up and downstairs and sleeping in concrete you yeah. ever have with Charlie Bronson yeah I was with Charlie Bronson up in Franklin's prison I was next door to him in a segregation unit and I was next door to him in um, sorry I was with him in Winston Green who was he prison Charlie Bronson I think is an absolutely adorable person um, he was he was a, always a gentleman to me. He was always extremely kind. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have the best press in the world. Um, but he was always a gentleman to me and uh, a gentleman. And he was, I say, he was to me. I thought he was a bit of a lovable rogue. Yeah, because I think he's... A bit of a rough diamond, yeah, you know? Yeah, he spent over 40 years and he's never did a murder. He's just a constant brand. I think it's the press that maybe keep him in. But I think he's trying to change that now. I think he's got a good team behind him. Because I was speaking to Vic Dart and he says he's, they're trying to get the team behind him where they're not trying to portray that image because all the mm. books and films, it's all violence. They're trying to change that to hopefully get him out. But of career. course, um, Charlie, Charlie's big enough to take this. But... Um, some of his artwork could be considered homophobic and um, I think this is why he received his last sentence because um, an art teacher um, called Charlie out on that Charlie went to the art teacher and said what do you think of my art and the teacher I believe was gay um, wasn't too favourable in his comments to our Charlie and you know Charlie kicked off Mm -hmm. and now he's got the sentence he's got now. Um, I don't think Charlie Bronson is homophobic. I think he's provocative. Mm -hmm. And um, and of course, I wish him well. And um, Charlie, if, you, if, if you've got a mobile phone and you see this, <laughs> send me a visit in order, and I will come up and see you anywhere you are in this country. <laughs> Who was the maddest person you were in prison with? Oh, Charlie Bronson. No yeah, we're in Char love, with Charlie. I love Charlie. A lot of people don't like him, but I found him very, very funny. I was, I'm still in touch with him to a certain extent today, but he he was kind of... The, the reason I like Charlie Bronson um, back in the early days, not so much now, I mean, I still like him. He's a nice guy. I wouldn't like him living next door to me, that's for sure. But And I've had him living next door to me in a block in Idown. But um, he was kind of like... Where in the eighties, where the screws had complete control of the prison system before strange ways, jails like Wandsworth from Brixton, the screws were brutal, and I mean absolutely brutal. And to see Charlie Bronson strolling through a prison with eight screws running after him and him just marching along, like with him opening the doors and trying to get out of his way before, because that's what he used to do—just a pair of boots and a prison raincoat. He was kind of our guy, you know. I mean, he was our. Not, I wouldn't say hero, but he was our tool against the prison system. You know, he was actually knocking screws up in the air and knocking them out. And 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 if when we done it, we was getting half killed. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, so he was kind of a bit of a hero. To me. How much could how true is it that he could fight? He could scrap Charlie. He could have a good route. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say he was Superman. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, what I found in jail is um, a lot of people who you think might be sort of invulnerable or but they've got a reputation of being so hard you can't even they're not really that i mean everybody's human everybody's got their own weaknesses, weaknesses yeah